Good morning, for, uh, I got a thumbs up and then a maybe and then a thumbs up. Good morning, friends. Good morning, family. Good morning, GT. Hey, I have a mask on. <laughs> ah, and I always put the mask on. <laughs> oh, well, nothing like um, making your mistake in front of the, a live internet audience. Let's try that again. Good morning. It's 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning. We are glad you are joining us for worship, joining us for time in the presence of the Lord, time to hear from His Word, um, time even to be together, even though we're separated by uh, geography, by physical limitations because of this pandemic. Uh, I know that we're together in the Spirit. The Lord is not inhibited by our social distancing. He doesn't social distance. There's no such thing as spiritual distancing if you're inviting the presence of the Lord into your room, into your heart, into your life. In the Bible, uh, it's almost like Jesus anticipated a day when there would be Zoom. He heals a couple of people from a distance. A centurion comes to him and says, my servant is at home, like a three days journey away. And he's sick, can you heal him? Jesus is like, no problem. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to be there. I don't need to be there in person for my spirit to move. He heals a Syrophoenician woman's daughter who also is laying sick at home. Jesus doesn't need to be present. And we don't need to be present with each other for his spirit to be drawing us and binding us together and doing an awesome work in our lives. Even giving us a sense of togetherness, especially if you talk to each other a little bit in the comments. But We're going to open up with a little bit of worship and then uh, kick off our main service. This is our pre-service. Our main service will start at about 10 after 10. That is on time, GT standard time. So we hope that you'll worship along with us here as we get ready. As we warm up our voices, we warm up our hearts. We ask the Lord Jesus to be crowned in our praises. We ask him to reveal himself as we sing and declare the truth of his name, the power, the majesty of his glory. We look to you, God. We look to you, God, because we know you are our hope and our help. You alone are the healer for the hurt. You alone are the refuge for the broken. So strengthen our hearts and let us not grow weary. Steady our souls and make us brave in the fire. Let our faith become a mountain that will rise and never fall. Lifted high above the valley, we declare your kingdom come. We will cling to what you promised till the day you call us home. Let our faith become a mountain we stand on. And let us not grow weary Steady our souls And make us brave in the fire And let our faith become a mountain That will rise and never fall Lifted high above the valley We declare your kingdom come We will cling to what you promised Till the day you called us home, let our faith become a mountain we stand on. We will stand unaffected by the chaos. We will stand no matter what the cost. No more worry, no more fear. Every doubt will 
disappear We will stand unaffected by the chaos We will stand no matter what the cost No more worry, no more fear Every doubt will disappear Disappear. Let our faith become a mountain that will rise and never fall. Lift it high above the valley. We declare your kingdom come. We will cling to what you promised till the day you called us home. Let our faith. A mountain that will rise and never fall Lift it high above the valley We declare your kingdom come We will cling to what you promised Till the day you called us home Let our faith become a mountain We stand on Affected by the chaos We will stand No matter what the cost Come on, say it No more worry, no more fear Every doubt will disappear We will stand Unaffected by the chaos We will stand No matter what the cost
We just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We lift you up. We magnify you. We exalt you. We put you above everything. You are the name above all names. And we just thank you, God, for what you're going to do in this year. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do in this service. We just thank you, God, for the new thing that you are doing, for the new things that you're up to. We sense it, God, and we call on you, God, to bring those things to fruition, and we will partner with you, Lord. I'm just so excited about the the sense of newness that we're feeling in the prayer meetings, oh God. Just that new thing that you're doing, and I'm not ashamed to be excited. I'm not ashamed to be excited to have the heart of a child, oh God, who's just like, what are you going to do? What are you doing? What are you up to? What new thing are you ushering in with your spirit, oh God? I just pray that like seeds, that it would be planted in the hearts of your people, oh God, that there would be willing yes spirits that say, yes, I don't know exactly what it is that you're doing, but I want to be a part of it. I want to do my part in in partnering with you, Lord, for all of those new voices that we're going to be hearing, all the different parts of the body that are that are going to be operating in the purpose in which you have set. We just look forward to seeing it, God, to just acknowledging and recognizing the move of your spirit, Lord, and everywhere where it doesn't look like what we're used to, everywhere where it doesn't look like the traditional, everywhere where maybe it even looks a little wild, God, we just welcome that. We invite you. We invite you. We say yes. We say yes. We say you are welcome here because this is your house. In every house where we are, that's your house too. And we just say we want to be a part of it, God. We don't want to stand in the way. We don't want to be a block. We don't want to be a hindrance. Everything that would um, rise up against what you're trying to do, we just call it down in Jesus' name. And we lift you up. We lift you up. And however you want to be, we just pray that our hearts would be um, open and and supple and and ready, God, for whatever change you're bringing. Because we know we need a change. Oh, it's 2021 and we know we need a change, God. So we just say yes. We just say, come, Jesus. We just say, come. Come and rule in our lives, reign in our lives. And we just speak a spirit of courage to welcome the new thing, that thing that looks different, God. We just say yes. We just say yes. We thank you, Lord, and we glorify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. (laughs) I'm going to call it audible here for a minute. These words are just going through my heart. Sorry, brother Michael, and sorry, Matt. Hopefully it'll only take you a second, but it goes like this. Breakthrough in my heart, breakthrough in my mind, breakthrough in my spirit, breakthrough in my soul, breakthrough in my weakness, breakthrough in my struggle. You are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough in our worship, breakthrough in our praise, breakthrough in our lift and glorify your name, breakthrough in our dance, breakthrough in our shout. You are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough in my heart, breakthrough in my mind, breakthrough in my spirit, breakthrough in my soul, breakthrough in my weakness, breakthrough in my struggle. You are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough in our worship, breakthrough in our praise, breakthrough in our lift, glorify your name, breakthrough in our dance, breakthrough in our shout. You are the God, you are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough. You are the and I stand way through. And I really don't know what to do. I look to you, breakthrough. Walls fall down when I shout through. Strongholds break when I pray through. So I'm gonna praise you. You are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough. You are the God of the breakthrough When I can't see my way through And I really don't know what to do I look to you, breakthrough Walls fall down when I shout through Strongholds break when I pray through So I'm gonna praise you You are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough Whoa, you are the God of the breakthrough. 
breakthrough. Well, I gotta sing it one more time. Come on. Breakthrough in my heart, breakthrough in my mind, breakthrough in my spirit, breakthrough in my soul, breakthrough in my weakness, breakthrough in my struggle. You are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough in my worship, breakthrough in my praise, breakthrough in I live to glorify your name, breakthrough in I dance, breakthrough in I shout. You are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough in our heart, breakthrough in my mind. Breakthrough in my spirit, breakthrough in my soul, breakthrough in my weakness, breakthrough in my struggle. You are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough in my worship, breakthrough in my praise, breakthrough in I live to glorify your name, breakthrough in I dance, breakthrough in I shout. You are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough, you are the God of the breakthrough. When I can't see my way through And I really don't know what to do I look to you, oh, breakthrough Walls fall down when I shout through Strongholds break when I pray through So I'm gonna praise you You are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough You are the God of the breakthrough Breakthrough into our hearts, Lord. Oh, let our praise break through the heavens. Ah, we, we shout hallelujah. We shout glory to the name of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. Call the sun to rise and to lay it down to rest and to hold this heart of mine. You hold my every breath. Such an awesome God, so mighty, so holy. So wonderful, such an awesome God, so selfless, so generous, so faithful you are. Seated in majesty, reigning in hope. Such an awesome God, so mighty, so holy, so wonderful. Such an awesome God, so selfless, so generous, so faithful you are. Such an awesome God, so so holy, so wonderful, such an awesome God, so selfless, so generous, so faithful you are, faithful you So faithful you are, so beautiful, so beautiful. We declare, we declare that nothing.
comes close to the Lord Almighty, nothing as sweet as His love and mercy, nothing comes close to the Lord Almighty, nothing as sweet as your love and mercy, nothing comes close to the Lord Such an awesome God, so selfless, so generous, so faithful you are. Such an awesome God, so mighty, so holy, so wonderful. Such an awesome God. So selfless, so generous, so faithful you are, so faithful you are, so faithful you A song rises from my soul A praise arises from my soul To say thank you, to say thank you To say I love you, Lord To say I love you, Lord And nothing, and nothing will stop this song No power in earth or in hell will stop me from praising for you have put life in me oh eternal life in me so let praises rise from the inside from the inside of me may you delight in the inside of me come fill my life from the inside from the inside of me set me on fire from the inside from the inside of me Cause all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high.
love fill my life from the inside, from the inside of me. Spirit set me on fire from the inside, from the inside of me. Cause all I to be lifted high. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be to be lifted high, higher and higher and higher in our praise, oh, 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 yeah. oh, 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 to be lifted high, yes, Jesus. my life till all they see is you Lord glorify your name fill my heart till all they see is you Lord glorify your name fill my life till all they see is you
deserts of Nevada and I remember being on these long stretches of, of the road and to the side it really is what they say a mirage right it is an optical illusion and it is so flat and such dryness and sand that the reflection of the Sun makes it look like there is water it makes it look like there is a lake in the distance. But it is an illusion. It is a mirage. And we were driving through Nevada. And in the distance, we could see something shiny, something reflective. And we're like, is that, a, is that a pond? Is that a lake? And as we got closer, it was nothing. It was solar panels. And I believe God is telling me this morning and he is telling us as a body that there are things in our life that are illusions, optical illusions, mental illusions, spiritual illusions that are keeping us from experiencing him. And so Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you begin to minister and that you begin to show us what illusions are in our heart. What illusions that we have believed. What illusions we are hanging on to or hoping for instead of you. That might be the need for pure information. Your illusion might be if you have the information, if you know what is coming this week, if you know when the vaccine is coming, if you know when it's your turn in line, you will feel more confident and more certain. Your illusion might be the breakthrough in finances that you're hoping for. But when you're hanging on so tightly for the finances, you're forgetting what God is doing in the here and now. How he is providing in the here and now. Your illusion, you might be fixating on your healing but forgetting about the healer instead of fixating on the healer. I don't know what your illusion is. I don't know what it is that we are hanging on to that is pacifying the longing, the voidness in our heart. Holy Spirit, would you speak to us and would you show us right now would you show us right now, God, what we're holding on to? What we've been distracted or deceived by? What we have been pacifying ourselves with, God? Where our hope has been in false places? God, and we know that only you, it is only you that if we are not at your feet, God, we are not drinking from the fountain of living water. If we are not in your presence, cheating ourselves. Spirit, 
would you speak right now? Speak to every heart and every home, God. There is too much falseness up there, God. There is too many things that want your place. There's too many opportunities to be distracted and deceived. So, Father, I pray that you bring us back to that place where it is only you. Where it is only you, Jesus. the depths of our heart. God, take your, take your rightful place in our heart, God. Let our faith cling to you. Let our hope be in you. Let our certainty be in you, God. time holy spirit break us reveal our mirages show us the genuine show us the real thing this is nothing we want more there's nothing that will actually satisfy us the mirage won't do it the reflection won't do it it has to be the pure water the pure water of your spirit the love that is only found in you in the life that can only be found through you Spirit, break us, come and overtake us. You're the one we're living for. Holy Spirit, lead us to the heart of Jesus. There is 
is nothing we want more. One more time, say. Holy Spirit, break us. Come and overtake us. You're the one we're living for. Holy Spirit, lead us to the heart of Jesus. There is nothing we want more. Father, we just thank you, God. We thank you that you are all we need, that you are all we need, Father. So I pray that we would need you with all of who we are that we would need you with all of who we are, God, that we would acknowledge that and pursue that with all of who we are. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word, God. Thank you for your generosity and your faithfulness. We love you, Lord. We love you and we thank you. Amen. glad tidings good morning friends and family I'm so glad I'm mean, you know it's it's uh, just a blessing technology is a blessing that we get to connect and extend the reach and extend the love and so thank you to all of you for joining from all the corners that you're joining from I just want to say welcome you are welcome to be uh, in worship with us this morning I want to uh, extend an invitation for our giving and our gratitude to Jesus. And uh, this will be a time where you can submit your tithes and offerings. God is so faithful. So on the screen, I believe on the screen, there are a couple ways to give. But if you're at home and you want to give by a card, you could visit the website gtsf.org. And there are ways to uh, submit donations there. You can also text to give if you're set up that way. And the number is 415-335-4900. You can see it better than I can. Um, and then you also have the option to drop a check or cash in the GT mailbox. So if you want to do a drive-by and put your envelope in our front door, that would be uh, wonderful as well. So, Father, let's just pray. God, we thank you um, that you are our provider, that you are our provider. Every need of this church, Father, you already know it. And we've seen and heard testimony over testimony of how you have provided in the past. And we pray that you would continue to meet the needs of this church, the needs of our congregation, and that you would extend it far beyond our reach and what we could imagine. God, let these tithes and offerings go, God. Go in places where people need to experience your love, where they need to hear your word. Father, we just praise you and we um, submit our offering, just a small token of our love to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Garcia. It's good to have you back from the deserts of Nevada and Utah and New Mexico and Arizona. It felt good to have you back before I could see your face, but now I see you. It keeps on getting better. <laughs> All right. This is why everybody was having such a hard time, huh? The mute button has disappeared into the microphone again. My trusty pen, ooh, is not unmuting it, so I might not be able to preach. How did you guys do this? Y'all are extra smart or something because I can't get it to unmute. Oh, I got it. Don't touch it anymore. Okay. <laughs> well, as uh, Jennifer was up here just a few moments ago, I had this surge of longing for you to be in the room. Uh, now, up to this point, most of the time when I've been here and we've had a small team of people streaming services, we've got two, four, six, eight, nine, nine people, oh, ten people in the room this morning. 
Um, I've just been super grateful to be able to be here at all because we spent the whole summer, uh, actually most of the late spring, summer and early fall in, in my living room. And it's so great to be here with even a small group of believers to be able to worship together. Uh, but this morning there was this hunger in me as, as Jennifer came up here and began to pray and began to follow what the Holy Spirit was doing. And uh, I just began to see in the Spirit this room filled with people again, people uh, rejoicing, people overflowing in and, and gratitude and in love and in worship and what the Holy Spirit is doing in their lives. Uh, I know God's doing stuff for in you at home, but I think he has something incredible planned for when we're able to gather again. So if you're not already praying for that day to come, I, I ask that you would join us in praying uh, that this pandemic end, that people be healed, uh, that these numbers just, what do you call that? It's a cliff, that they go right off the cliff and drop so that we're able to be healthy, we're able to be without fear uh, among people, that even people with uh, pre-existing conditions would feel no fear in being in a crowd of people at church because the coronavirus is under the control of the King of Kings. Amen? We're looking forward to that day. Uh, I have one announcement, and, and that is that to the right of me on the east wall of this church, I think that's east, right? East, south, yeah, 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 that's east. How long have I been here? It's 20 years, and I don't know which way east is when I'm standing at this spot. Uh, on the east wall of the church to my right, there are two heaters pumping warm air into the church right now. It's actually made quite a bit of difference in the temperature in this room this morning. It was about 60 degrees in here last Sunday when we had service. Now, this is exciting news because for starters, it's been three years since we had two working HVAC units on this wall, which meant some very cold winter ser morning services and some very hot summer evening services. But it's even more exciting because it means that we have completed our Seeing 2020 project. Every single one of them, this was the last one to be in place. We started with the nursery last fall, then we replaced this projector, which is why Jennifer could turn around and read it instead of having to look at the one on the back wall. Before, this one wouldn't have been any help to her. Uh, then we went, we remodeled the kitchen and then the bathroom. Then we did the roof of the church, just finished at the end of December. And now this week we were able to install, actually we, Walt Eidman was able to install this HVAC unit. So I am having a party. I am excited. Um, I can't tell you how good it is. COVID tried to delay the project, maybe even tried to snuff it out, but God was faithful and he came through on what he said he would do. Amen. So I want to say a huge thank you to the board for standing with me and for believing this vision. If they hadn't authorized it, we never would have been able to go through with it. I want to thank you, the congregation for believing in it. I believe that your faith is, is actually manifest. The things that have happened are your faith. They are the, the substance of your faith. They're proof of it and also of your gifts. You've made it happen. And a special thanks again to Walter Eidman and Tom Peterson. They served as project managers, but they weren't only overseeing the work. They were doing quite a bit of the work themselves. So I am just rejoicing in my spirit this morning. I'm rejoicing in our building because we're getting it ready for another decade of ministry. 2020 wasn't able to close us down. And 2021 is just the beginning of the next 10 years of what God wants to do in his house in San Francisco, in your lives and through your lives, through the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Okay, that calls for, if you've never seen this before, I'm sorry, it embarrasses me too, but that's called a happy dance. I'm doing a happy dance, not just on the inside, but the actual ugly, awkward, happy dance. <laughs> oh, well, on top of that, today marks our final week of our fasting and our prayer meetings for the month of January. The focus of these 21 days is we've been repeating just about every morning at 6 a.m. when we gather. No matter how many times we say it, it bears repeating again. And Sister Jen just said it a moment ago, but it is that Jesus is the one thing that is needed. Time in the presence of Jesus, like we just had. Time worshiping Him. Time seeking Him. Time developing intimacy with Him and time listening to his words and then praying 
that our lives will be shaped and directed by those words of his, that his kingdom will come, his perfect will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And whether or not you've been fasting, whether or not you've been to any one of these prayer meetings, I encourage you to join us in this last week. I guarantee you that the 50 or 60 people who have been attending regularly so far would testify that nothing we've given up, not any food, not any activity, not any of the sleep that it requires to get up at 6 a.m. or any of the time that we've given to seek Jesus, none of that is worth being compared to the inexpressible good that we have experienced in his presence through his word and through the Holy Spirit working in us and through us. In fact, it's been so good that it's been a little bit difficult to think that this is the last week. As tempting as it is to add another week or two of prayer, I'm holding on to the belief that we will be able to do some prayer meetings around Easter time in person. Can somebody say amen? So I'm asking, I'm inviting you to join us. I'm not trying to recruit you. I'm not trying to build numbers. I'm trying to give you a chance to experience what's been happening at prayer meetings. Join us. The link to the prayer meeting and to the details of the fast are going in the comment section right now. You should have received this in an email or a text earlier this week. And if you did it, the links for the email and the text notifications are in that same page that has the fasting and the prayer details. Uh, Brother Michael Stoutmeyer is also putting a a link to the one-year Bible that we're reading together. You can get that. You can read along with us. It's a New Testament only. You can read it once, twice, or three times if you're interested in reading plans. Go ahead and send me an email, and I'll, I'll let you know how you can join. Now, to review quickly where we've been the last two Sundays. We started this year by looking at the story of two sisters. Their names are Martha and Mary. And Martha is consumed with the household responsibilities of hosting when Jesus comes to the house as a guest. Now, I can sympathize. If Jesus came to my house, I would want to run around and clean up a little bit too. (laughs) But it says that Mary, the sister Mary, has chosen to sit at the feet of Jesus and to listen to him teach. And when Martha gets upset and asks Jesus to ask Mary to get up and help, Jesus tells Martha, 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 Martha. You're distracted. You're consumed by so many things. You're worried about so many things. And one thing is needed. Mary has chosen it. It's the best part. And it will not be taken from her. Jesus is the thing we need the most. And he is also the best thing in this life. Amen. Then last week, we looked at the parables of the treasure in the field and the pearl of great price. And we saw that the Bible tells us that Jesus is worth giving everything up for. He's worth leaving everything behind for. Like I said a moment ago about fasting, there is nothing that we can give up for Jesus that will end up leaving us feeling like we've sacrificed anything at all when we have Jesus. And today we're going to look at a few more examples in the Bible that illustrate the extreme value, the incomparable worth of Jesus. Stories that indicate to us, that remind us that nothing comes close to the level of importance of Jesus in our lives, to our lives, and for our lives. That the promise of following Jesus outweighs all of the risks associated with leaving behind whatever life we are clinging to now because it's what we're comfortable with. We're going to be reading from chapter Mark, chapter Mark, from the book of Mark, chapter 14. I don't have the beginning of these verses, but I think it's around 40, mm, 45-ish, maybe. In chapter Mark, Again, in the book of Mark, chapter 14, we encounter a woman whose gratitude toward Jesus, whose passion and commitment to him are so great that out of the blue, it seems, she approaches Jesus, probably from behind, breaks open a jar of perfume and pours it over his head. Now, this might sound unremarkable or odd at first, maybe even a little stalker-ish, 
But as we read on, we find out something astonishing. And that is that this perfume is worth over a year's, one year's wages. Now, let's just take the average yearly wage in the United States today. We're talking somewhere around the range of $50,000. I was blown away by that. I had no idea. I don't know what it might mean financially for you to lay down $50,000 for no other reason than to say, I love you, Jesus. But for me, that's pretty out of the ballpark. You'd have to do a miracle in my life for that to even be possible. And people back then were even less likely to have a year's wages saved up than the average person is today. What this woman is saying is the only way I can comprehend how to externalize, how to even begin to show the love for you that's in my heart is to perform this extravagant gesture to give you this costly gift. My love for you is so deep that I would give up a year's wages just to get the chance to make sure that you know how I feel without a second thought, without an ounce of regret of letting go of it. And friends, the beauty of this particular gift, if you think about it, it's that it's used up completely in the moment that it's given. It's completely expended. There's none left after she pours it on Jesus' head. The perfume isn't something that Jesus can reuse later for a special occasion. It's not something that, that he can sell if he falls on hard times. Even the alabaster jar that contained the perfume initially was broken. He can't put it on a shelf to enjoy the beauty of it or as a reminder of the moment that it was given to him. Now Mark doesn't tell us who this woman is, but in John chapter 12, he lets us in on the secret. And what a surprise it is. It turns out it's the very same woman who was sitting at the feet of Jesus in Luke chapter 10, who was listening to his teaching. It's none other than Mary, the sister of Martha. Mary, who had chosen the one thing needed. Mary, who had chosen the best part. And I want to encourage you today. Is it just possible that if we were to sit at the feet of Jesus, that if we were to take his presence a little more seriously, that if we were to make it a higher priority in our life, that we would receive something in return that would be so amazing, so unthinkable, that we would lay down our costliest gifts to Jesus just to let him know how grateful we were for what we received. And I'm not getting ready to take an offering here. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about your love for Jesus. I'm talking about what you're willing to be able to sacrifice just to tell him, this is how much I love you. What if we sat at the feet of Jesus? What if we would experience something so priceless like Mary did? We'll come back to her in a moment because we're going to look at two more people in the gospel who discovered that Jesus was the real answer to their need. Or maybe you could say he was the answer to their real need. Both ways of saying it are equally true. The first we're going to look at is a blind beggar named Bartimaeus. This is in, we meet him in Luke chapter 10. And that sounds like I just, uh, Mark chapter 10. As Jesus and his disciples are leaving the city of Jericho, there's a loud, a large crowd of people following behind them. And the Bible says that Bartimaeus is sitting beside the road. Starting in verse 47, we read this. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, many of the people yelled at him. But he shouted only louder, son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, tell him to come here. So they called to the blind man, cheer up. <laughs> come on, he's calling you. Bartimaeus threw aside his cloak, jumped up, and he came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. 
My teacher, the blind man said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go, for your faith has healed you. Instantly, the man could see, and he followed Jesus down the road. Now, Bartimaeus has a couple of things to teach us. First, he calls on Jesus, and he keeps calling Even when the people around him are telling him to be quiet. In fact, the Bible told us that he shouts even louder when the crowd tells him to shush. This is so basic, but so challenging at the same time. Because how many of us can admit that we have needs, serious needs even, facing major challenges in our lives. And if we were to get honest with ourselves right now, the truth is that we have not prayed about them even once. We haven't brought these needs before God. The God who said, call to me and I will answer you. We haven't brought these needs to Jesus who said, ask anything in my name and it will be done for you. Sometimes I think we Christians are like a person who's going about hungry. Haven't eaten for days, and not because you're fasting. Because you haven't eaten, you haven't been able to eat. When all the while, we have a bank account with hundreds of thousands of dollars in it. We'll even walk right past an ATM without making a withdrawal. All the while, we're getting weaker and weaker and hungrier and hungrier. Why in the world, if you had all that money, wouldn't you stop, get out some cash, and get yourself a burrito? Sorry, I have burrito on the mind. It sounds ridiculous, right? It is ridiculous. But why don't we call out to God for answers when He has told us that He is our provider, that He is our strength, that He is our healer, that He is our helper, our advocate, and our defender. He is the God who sees you and hears you. He's promised to be near when you call. He's promised to come near when you're brokenhearted. He's promised to draw near when you draw near to Him. So why don't we take advantage of that? Why do we have needs that we haven't asked the need meter to help with. So I love that Bartimaeus calls on the one who has the power to change his circumstances. And I love the fact that he ignores the voices of those who try to silence him. Because we all have those voices in our lives, don't we? Sometimes the voices come from those around us. They think Christianity is foolish. It's outdated. It's superstitious. It's a tool of the powerful to keep the masses subdued. We need to silence those voices. Sometimes the voices come from inside of us, though, don't they? We doubt. We ask ourselves, why would I bother praying? I've been praying this for a while, and he hasn't answered. Or I prayed last time, and he didn't do anything. Or I had trouble that time, and he didn't intervene. Sometimes we are the ones speaking doubt to ourselves. Some of us are, are too quick to bind the enemy. you got to work on the voice inside your own head. It's not him, it's you. And Bartimaeus gives us a pattern, a key, a strategy for what to do when those voices rise up. And it's to cry out louder. It's to pray harder. It's to rehearse the promises of God to you. It's to recite the names of God that declare His identity. And I want to encourage somebody this morning. Think about your need right now. Think about the situation that you're facing and determine, make a decision in this moment that you are going to cry out to Him about it. You're going to pray to Him. You're going to ask Him for the answer instead of just worrying, being tied up in knots about it, being tormented by anger or frustration or despair. Cry out to Him. He is a God who is near and who answers. But what challenges me the most about Bartimaeus is what happens after Jesus heals him. (laughs) I don't know about you, but I imagine that if I had been blind my whole life, there would be a long list of things that I would want to do on day one of being able to see. I would want to see the view of the city from Twin Peaks. I would want to go to the Golden Gate Bridge. 
I'd want to do just about everything that tourists want to do when they come to San Francisco, except to go to Pier 39. <laughs> I would want to sit and stare at the faces in amazement at the beauty and diversity of the people that God has created. I would get lost in the sky and in watching the waves come in off the ocean, I would be intoxicated with my new gift. I'd want to be drinking in every single sight possible. But the end of this story in Mark is so undramatic. The blind man doesn't shout for joy. He doesn't jump up or, or run around or cry or any of the things that we might expect someone to do when they just began to see. This is what the Bible says. He received his sight and immediately he followed Jesus down the road. Whatever plans Bartimaeus had, whatever he imagined he might do, if he ever gained the ability to see, immediately changed when Jesus touched his eyes. Those plans became meaningless compared to the pull of following this Jesus who had just healed him. I think this is the Bible's way of telling us that Bartimaeus had gained more than his physical eyesight when Jesus laid hands on him. The Bible is telling us that Bartimaeus saw clearly enough what was truly important at that moment. Come on, he had no idea where Jesus was even going. He just followed him. The one thing he knew, and we know he knew it because his actions tell us, he knew that Jesus was the one thing that he needed most. He knew instinctively in that moment, in his spirit, that Jesus was the best part of all that was available to him out here now that he could see. We'll come back to him in a moment. In our final story this morning, we turn to John chapter 4, where a woman from Samaria encounters Jesus at a well. Now, there's so much that could be said about this story, but because it's such a long passage, for the sake of our time together this morning, I'm going to cut it down to just some of the most important details. It's in John chapter 4. I encourage you to read the whole story sometime later today. But Jesus has sat down at this well to rest as his disciples go into town to buy food. It's the middle of the day when the sun is hottest when a woman comes to the well to draw her water. Uh, many of you probably know, typically, women would come to the well in the morning when it was much cooler to avoid the heat, to avoid the scorching sun, and to enjoy each other's company while they worked. Probably to catch up on some news. <laughs> but either this woman was too ashamed, or the other women in the town refused to associate with her, or most likely both, as we'll find out. On top of that, there are racial tensions at work. Jews refuse to have anything to do with Samaritans, as the gospel puts it. And then in verse 4 of chapter 7, in verse 7 of chapter 4, that is, goodness, Jesus says to her, please, give me a drink. She says to Jesus, uh, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift of God for you and who you are speaking to, you would be asking me for a drink and I would give you living water. Now, living water is the normal term for water from a stream as opposed to still water drawn from a well or, say, from a pond. Stream water, for obvious reasons, was far superior. It was always to pre be preferred over water from a well because of its freshness, its clarity, its taste. The motion and the rocks create a natural filtration system for the water. But in the same way that Jesus will later be talking about something more than the Jerusalem temple when he said, destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. Right now, Jesus is talking about a lot more than the difference between well water and spring water. But the woman doesn't know that yet. 
So she lobs some questions at Jesus and he replies, well, hey, anyone who drinks from this water will soon be thirsty again. But those who drink the water that I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Now, you got to think this, there has to be some sarcasm here. Like, well, if you have that water, what are you doing at this well? And why do you need a drink from me? Right? So she's like, well, please, why don't you give me this water? That way I'll never be thirsty and I'll have to have to come. I'll never have to come back here again. Right? And here the conversation gets interesting. I encourage you to read it. But Jesus starts to tell her some things about herself that no stranger could possibly know. We, the expression is she, he's reading her mail. She's impressed, but on the defensive. So she starts throwing out some religious questions, similar to what people might do today when they bring up the Crusades or the Inquisition. And then finally, she just tries to end the conversation. She's trying to find a way out. She says, well, I know the Messiah is going to come, the one who's called the Christ. When he comes, as opposed to you, <laughs> right? Why should I listen to you? The Messiah will have all the answers. And then Jesus says to her, I'm him. I am the Messiah. Verse 27, the Bible tells us just then the disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman. Okay? Imagine if you all, you're the church board, found me at 3 a.m. in the tenderloin at the corner of an alley talking to a prostitute. That's how the disciples feel about stumbling onto this conversation. But none of them had the nerve to ask, uh, what do you want with her? Or why are you talking to her? Then in verse 28, the Bible says this, the woman left her jar beside the water or beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone, come and see, come and see. I met a man who told me everything I've ever done. Could he possibly be the Messiah? Which I would say if she doesn't believe he's the Messiah, she wouldn't be inviting everybody to come and see, right? Now, do you ever go to the grocery store for, say, bananas? I'm eating a whole lot of bananas right now, so. But on your way to the produce department, you see a couple of things you realize you're out of. And then a couple of other things catch your eye. Fruit bars. <laughs> and then you get a phone call. And the next thing you know, you're on your way home with no bananas. Something similar has happened to this woman. Only it wasn't a distraction that kept this woman from getting what she came for. The truth is she got way more than she came for. What she got was freedom from her shame over her past. How do we know? Because the story starts with her trying to keep a low profile by coming to the well when nobody else is going to be there. And it ends with her running back into the town, shouting, Hey, everybody, come with me. She's trying to get everybody to pay attention to her. This woman has found life. How do we know? Because Jesus promised her that drinking the water that he gave would create a spring of water inside of her that would create eternal life. And this story starts with her coming to the well to draw water, and it ends with her running back to the town after leaving her water jug back at the well. She came rejected. She left accepted. She came ashamed. She left completely free from her fear. She came with her shields up. She left with her heart beating out of her chest. She came with issues of religion and she left with a foretaste of heaven. She left her water jug at the well, the thing that she needed to fill up so that, oh, to get her need met because the supernatural life that Jesus gave her was better than the natural water that she had come for in the first place. Friends, I don't know what kind of water chug 
you're carrying around. I don't know what it is that you feel like you need to fill you up. This ties straight back to what Jennifer was talking about. I don't know how many mirages you've been drawn to, how many reflections that you've been lured by, or you've put, you put your hope in them to satisfy you. But this one thing I do know, when you encounter Jesus today, he's still just as much more than your need as he was when that woman ran away from the well without her jug. You may already be a believer. You may already be a follower of Jesus. Well, I'll remind you that Peter was a follower of Jesus too. He had seen the resurrected Jesus with his own eyes. And he still went back to fishing afterwards because that's what he knew. That's what he was familiar with. That's what had worked for him so far. Well, as Alan Mateo shared yesterday at prayer meeting, no matter how comfortable the familiar is, when Jesus is inviting us into the unfamiliar, when he's calling us to the uncomfortable, we're going to have deeper contentment no matter where we are as long as we're with him. No matter what you're used to filling your water jars with, no matter how many times you've gone back to that same well or run to that same mirage, no matter how many times you've tried the same solution to your problem, Jesus is the solution. He is the only solution. Oh, I want to shout that over January of 2021 when there are so many people convinced that there's a, some other solution to what's going on in our world right now. Jesus is the only solution. And if you have him and nothing else, you will have more than enough. You have everything you need. But if you get everything else there is to be had in this world, but you don't have him, you will have less than nothing. Turn to Jesus to be filled this morning. Look to Jesus, to the solution for your problem, for the answer to your question. You might know him already, you might not. Listen, I can be just as good at trying to solve all of my own problems as anyone out there who does not know him. Put your hope, put your faith, put your confidence, put your all in Jesus this morning. And then finally, like really finally, I want you to think about the responses of the people we met this morning in the scriptures. The scriptures aren't here just to give us information. They're here to challenge us. These scriptures ask us, what are you doing in response to what Jesus has done for you? What did Mary do in response? She gave him extravagant, costly, sacrificial, and beautiful worship. That was Mary's response. What about Bartimaeus? What was his response? He laid down whatever other plans that he might have had to follow Jesus wherever Jesus was going. And then the woman at the well, so filled, so full that it overflowed from her in her running to tell everyone who would listen about the one who loved her and healed her soul. She didn't just stop going to the mirage. She ran to grab as many people as would come with her to take them to the real source, to pull them away from the mirages where they were drinking and bring them to the real thing. Father, this morning, in the name of Jesus, we want to come to the well of living water. We want to be people who recognize that you are the only one who can actually, who can truly meet our needs. You're the only one who has any real answers. 
And so we respond to you this morning. I believe you are meeting people. You are erasing their shame over their past. I believe that you are healing people. Healing people of physical sickness. Healing people of emotional sickness. And healing people of spiritual sickness at this moment. And as we open our eyes, I pray that our response would be to follow you wherever you go, whatever you call us to do, no matter how comfortable or unfamiliar it is. And then I pray that we would stop turning to those things that never have satisfied us. That we would lay down the jars that we have used to fill ourselves up in the past. And we would declare that you alone are life. You alone. You alone. give us what we truly need because you are what we truly need as I sing this closing song I invite you close your eyes and Maybe lift your hands, get on your knees. Ask Jesus, oh God, I need the kind of encounter that we just heard about, that we saw on the pages of the scriptures this morning. Show me who you are. And help me to put all of my trust in you. No matter how difficult it looks, whether I can see, whether it makes sense, I trust. By the power of your spirit, I trust in you. Can't go back to the beginning. Can control what tomorrow will bring But I know here in the middle Is the place that you promised to be Cause I'm not enough Unless you come Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? Meet me here, Lord. As I walk now through the valley Let your love wipe away every tear Like the sun is shaping the shadow In my weakness your glory Not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? Cause all you come, will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again?
reach for you as I call on you, Lord. Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, to ride by. Awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Cause I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? Of a beautiful father Breathe deep and know that he is good He's in love like no other As I lean back in the loving arms Of a beautiful father
Son of the Heavenly Father, from being trembling in some dark corner in fear to having that room flooded with light and a strong hand and a confident voice saying, Grab hold, I've got you. Where chains fall off. Chains of past hurt, chains of addiction are broken in a moment because of the delivering power, the saving power of the Son of God. Reveal yourself in all your goodness, in all your glory, in all your power, in all your beauty to those who are watching. God, I pray that even those who have already turned it off you would meet them. You would interrupt them. They would encounter you unexpectedly sometime today, tomorrow, this week. You'd stop them in their tracks. Let them know that you've got a better way, a better plan. And let us be the kind of people who respond with extravagant worship, with trust, trusting obedience with following you wherever you go with no thought of where the path might lead and of telling everyone who will listen how great you are help us to be those kinds of people to respond the way we ought to respond to the miracle of your presence the miracle of your friendship the overwhelming love that you pour out into our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for it. And we thank you for the grace that you give and the spirit that you empower with to do everything that you've called us to do and be. You don't leave us on our own to figure it out. You give us everything we need to do it if we will just say yes. So we say yes this morning. We say yes this morning to your will and to your way. In Jesus' name, we commit it to you. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you, Facebook world. God bless you, Internet world. God bless you, Glad Tidings. God bless you, San Francisco. God has an amazing plan. We just have to let go of our own plans for long enough to follow Him long enough to Get a glimpse of those plans. Amen. May you do it in the name of Jesus. God bless you. See you soon.